Okay, great. Uh, welcome to the first edition of TestMU Conference. And I'm very glad to welcome you for the masterclass of the season. And here we have two industry veterans speaking on a very thought-provoking topic, convergence of automation, how to convert testing from a cost to a value contributor. I'm your host, Mohit Juneja, joining you live from India. And before we start the session, I, we would like to thank all the community members, partners, and customers for supporting us and being a part of this fantastic celebration here at TestMU Conference. Now, uh, for decades, quality assurance has been perceived as a cost center and many a times been infamously titled as the biggest bottleneck for digital transformation. With automation being an enterprise-wide phenomena and the number one priority for technology leaders, is there a potential for testing to finally get C-level attention it deserves? In today's masterclass, you will have a unique opportunity to learn about this. How test engineers can spearhead the enterprise automation journey. How test engineers can use their automation skill set in other digital transformation areas. And how sharing and reusing of automation assets and infrastructure can save cost and drive ROI from overall digital transformation initiatives. And to talk about all of this, we have two industry leaders here from UiPath Test Suite product team. Our first speaker is responsible for robotic process automation testing, test orchestration, and CI integration. He has studied business informatics at Vienna University of Economics and has more than 10 years of experience in automation. Please welcome Thomas Stalker. We also have an industry veteran who has been super active in the developer ecosystem for over 20 years. He has been a developer, a test engineer, an automation architect for over 10 years, and then packaged all his learnings to promote and evangelize developer tools such as IBM Rational, Rally Software, IBM Lotus, many more, and currently working at UiPath where he's responsible for the product marketing strategy for UiPath Test Suite. Please welcome Matt Olitsa. So let's Thank get you. right into it. Over to you, Matt and Thomas. All right. Let's get started. So we're going to have a fun session today. Um, today is going to be a, a kind of, a, I would call it the format of discussion. So Thomas and I are going to have a nice discussion with you guys today um, and just chat about kind of the convergence of automation, where it's going, and, and we're going to throw in a, a fun analogy too. And so some, some ground rules while we're here is keep an open mind uh, because this is a new paradigm that, you know, we want you to think about, you know, and uh, there's no elephants in the room. We want to have fun, um, ask questions if they come up um, and we'll try to get them answered. Um, so let's get, get going. So I think I, I, I actually couldn't do a better um, introduction, Thomas, than, uh, than Mohit gave us. Um, that was fantastic. Um, do you want to tell, say anything about your background at all that um, might be uh, interesting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, thanks everyone for joining. Um, thanks to the Lambda Test guys for, for inviting us. This has been a great conference so far. Um, the whole setup, um, the topics, really great to watch, great to, to, to interact. Uh, Mohit, thanks for the introduction. First of all, you named us veterans. So Matt, that means we are old, obviously. But I think that, that doesn't matter at all. We are happy to, to, to be on, on probably the older side now and to share some of our experience so far. The introduction was great, I think. From my uh, point of view, as mentioned by Mohit, um, my background is in testing, more specifically in test automation. I've been in consulting, in, in, in engineering, in um, product management, started off at Tricentis. Most of you probably know that company, small company from Vienna. Meanwhile, pretty successful. And roughly three and a half years ago, um, my, uh, I and my team, we, we moved over to UiPath. And that's when we started a new journey and introduced the test suite at UiPath. All right, excellent. Yeah. And, um... Kind of an interesting fact about me is I um, actually started my first job out of college was I was a COBOL JCL developer. Um, and you are really, old. Yeah, I am old. And uh, it's, it's my second job career, you know, if I have to do something else. So, because uh, there's no COBOL developers left in the world, I don't think. Um, 
But um, and uh, but the interesting thing is that I really got into test automation around the forcing function of Y2K, which was kind of a big issue at one point and then a non-issue after it happened. Um, but it's pretty funny that um, that's kind of how a lot of test automation, I think, got a boost um, in, the, in the late 90s when we were preparing for Y2K, which it was very interesting times for sure. All right, well, let's keep going. Absolutely. So um, this will be the first and last slide that is, a, a, you know, promotes UiPath. Uh, but we thought it would be important since a lot of you probably haven't heard of us to kind of give you a brief history of kind of where we came from um, and kind of why we joined. And so UiPath started off as a screen scraping company way back in 2005. They brought it to a customer. They saw it. They were like, oh, well, we could do other stuff with this. We could like automate this and we could, you know, connect our different systems with this by, you know, using this to automate it instead of just screen scrape it. Um, and so over the time, um, the founder of our company, Daniel Dinas, he, he built a, a UI path eventually, um, and that's where we come today. And um, it's, it's a proven technology. It's number one ranked at, at, by Gartner and Forrester in the RPA space. Um, and then most recently, last spring, um, we, we participated in our first analyst report with IDC, and we debuted as a, as a leader in the testing space, um, in the cloud testing space, to be specific. Um, and so, you know, and the reason why I joined UiPath is because actually I was uh, brought in by a former colleague. He showed me a video of what it was, and I'm like, this is what I used to do. And I said, why aren't you guys using this for testing? Because that's crazy. Um, and so that's why, and then they went and hired Thomas and his team to come in and build Test Suite, which was released in 2020. Um, Thomas, uh, I think now you kind of set, added yourself on why you joined UiPath. Um, yeah, but, uh, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably something to add. We've um, we've visited quite some testing conference in the uh, in, in 2022. So we've been at um, Star East. We've been at Eurostar. Um, and as, as Matt mentioned, um, so far we are not really uh, have been recognized as a testing vendor. So everybody said, "You, I have. I probably heard about you, but in testing, no idea." So we hope to, to be able to change that. And for all of you, as Matt said, that's the last UiPath slide for today. But have a look at it. Uh, probably join our community. We have a completely free community version where you can try everything out. Um, and we are, uh, I'm sure you will you will be amazed by, by what is available for free, actually, for you to try. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and I should also mention that we have, I think, what are we up to? 1.5 million community members now. So a very big, robust community. Um, and the good news is, is that Test Suite was built on the same tools the RPA team is using. Um, and so everything will work together, which we'll kind of talk about today. Um, you know, how, how you can use these components you know, across different teams. So let's get into it. So I think we can agree that there's a lot of improvement in the testing space across the enterprise. You know, testing is, you know, Automation is going to be important across the enterprise, like Mohit um, mentioned earlier. You know, it's a hot topic in boardrooms now. Um, but how can we, uh, you know, how can we address this in testing? And is testing part of this, you know, movement? And we believe it definitely is, and it's a very key member of this movement. But today, as was mentioned, you know, in the introduction, um, testing is perceived as a bottleneck and a cost center. Um, and kind of, I, I equate that, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of factors, but I think bad automation is, is a root cause of that because, you know, over 20 years, when I started 20 years ago, I was striving to get 80% test automation rates for our regression testing. And I think all of us kind of have that aspiration of 80, 90%. Um, some have made it, you know, very, I think very few, um, but um, a lot of people are still striving for that even 20 years later. And so at the root cause, I think automation is a problem. Um, and then, in the IT space, um, again, um, IT leaders are still having problems with connecting systems, um, and, and there's a lot of different tools and automation in the IT space. We're not going to go into that space very much today, but it's important to recognize that IT uses automation, you know, as much as as other teams do. Um, and then, and then, um, as Thomas mentioned, RPA. So, so UiPath is an RPA company, and what we found is the business is, has kind of hooked on to RPA as kind of the next big thing. A lot of people think it's a fad, but I can tell you um, our 15,000 customers would tell you that it's not a fad and that they're, they're getting real results um, from, from their, from their uh, implementations. And so with all these divergent um, uh, trends happening, we kind of see a, a, a kind of a common thread across this, 
where bad automation is the problem and good automation is the solution. And it's not even just good automation because good automation means a lot of things. It, can, it means you have to do it the right way and you have to do it in a coordinated way. So what do, what do you think about that, Thomas? Uh, absolutely, can just agree on that. Um, to 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 kind of kind of connect to what you said earlier, um, from a vendor's perspective, I remember very well, specifically in our starting years at Tricentis, no way to get C level attention because it's just testing. It's something you have to do. It costs money, but it is very very hard to kind of communicate the value of testing. What what do I get for testing? Yeah, I have to do it, but I don't save money on the RPA side. That's our daily business so far at UiPath. It's fairly easy, right? Because you see, you have the numbers, you save money by automating a process. But if you compare those two tools, you might come to the conclusion there is some similarities and that's what we want to talk today. And about the automation rates, you're, you're completely right. As a vendor, again, we always promised, yeah, you get to 99% automation rate. Um, but automation is probably simple to some extent on paper, but in, in, in reality, it can become very complex. You have uh, complex systems getting even more complex. Um, um, you have distributed systems. You have so much different technologies and variants, devices and whatnot. So automation, specifically stable automation um, over time, that's the challenge. Absolutely. All right. So moving on. Um... So we kind of talked about the macro problems of automation, but let's talk about like what's wrong with an apples and oranges approach, best of breed. Um, and the, the first area that I I think we should talk about, and, and these are not mutually exclusive by any means, but um, but you know having silos of tool and then shadow automation I think is a big problem in IT as well, where people just get tools to do it themselves, um, where you don't know about them, you can't you know the ties to the governance piece. Um, but it also is just hard to maintain all those things and hard to coordinate all those things. Um, so, yeah, what do you think, Thomas? Yeah, and that's probably an interesting question for the round as well. Um, you will have silos here and there, right? Um, we um, Every company nowadays says we, we are moving towards Agile, right? And then we have that little, uh, little project within the big corporation and say, okay, now we are Agile. But still, you experience those silos from team to team, from, um, from organization area to organization area. Um, and that's a problem. And just look at your team, look at your product area, look beyond that. And um, you're still only in development, probably. It's testing in development. You're not even touched IT. Then move, move ahead. Uh, go ahead and um, look at IT. Uh, go ahead again and look at uh, business area. So there's a lot of silos within a, a bigger organization and a lot of them doing similar things in probably a different fashion. And that's one of the big, big issues that we see here, right? We have a lot of waste, a lot of redundancy over and over again throughout the enterprise. And that's not to mention, I mean, the waste, is, you know, also the licensing costs, the cost of maintaining those things, the cost of having multiple experts that understand different, you know, technologies and different languages. Uh, the different tools are using, there's skill sets, there's, um, and then that, like you said, uh, there's a lot of duplicative effort and probably a lot of duplicate components. You know, if you think about example of just logging into SAP, there's, there should be, you know, what if there was one object that did all that, that all the time? I mean, that's kind of where we're going to. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I think that's, you know, a big problem in, in this, in this space. So let's, um, let's keep going. And, um, I think um, a lot of people kind of want may want to see what what is automation convergence? What does it kind of look like? Um, and then this is kind of a, the common you know uh, scenario that we talk to our customers about. And so a lot of people are saying that oh well, you need testing tools should be you know purpose built for testing, and RPA is purpose built for process automation. But when you really break them down, um, the only difference is, is that they are targeting different environments, but they're both emulating a user. They're both navigating through an application uh, workflow, as, as, it, as it were. They run a bunch of data sets, you know, in, in robot, in RPA, they're running data sets that are actually going to be, in, run, you know, creating production data, um, which is also something important. And then they're executing a processor activity. And, and then both of them are reducing risks and costs as well. So, um, you know, really, they are very similar. And, um, you know, so that, you know, and, 
And anything to add there, Thomas? Yeah, um, when we joined UiPath, we came from Tracentis, we had the, the testing lens, right? Um, and just a little anecdote, we, we, we got into a, a board meeting with, with all the important guys from our PA side. We were very enthusiastic and we showed them, okay, to make this a testing tool, we have to do this and this and this and this. And they just watched us um, uh, throughout uh, or watched, watched us, uh, watched at us uh, or looked at us, sorry, with big eyes. And actually they didn't know what we were talking about. So we had our specific lens and they had their specific lens. So I would slightly disagree with it's all the same, right? There is differences. You have a testing solution has specifics. Testing and RPA are not the same. But the important thing we want to share here is they they have already uh, they have also a lot in common, and it's not plain automation only. So there's other components, as as you mentioned, Matt. There's components that you have specifically on the testing side, which is to test to validate. Well, guess what? That's super useful. Um, on RPA side, because RPA is nothing else than automation, uh, than software that is on top of your existing software. It's another layer. So it, you have to test it, right? So you need those testing capabilities. Looking from the other side, you have on process automation, a typical um, functionality there is called something like process mining or task mining to discover automation opportunities. Guess what? That's super useful in testing because it can discover what you have to test and what is more, it can already generate certain automation or automation skeletons that you can reuse on the testing side. Yep. I totally agree. And, um, yeah, and that, that is totally true. And, um, I think the other interesting thing that, um, that we learned when we came into UiPath is that we found that RPA customers don't test their RPAs or they manually test them very, very happy, only the happy paths. And so that's the other thing that Thomas and his team brought is testing of, of RPAs as well. So just had to mention that, you know, in, in passing, because I think that was pretty important. So, all right, just to, to wrap that up, the yep. idea of convergence, sorry, um, con with convergence of automation, what we mean by that is, you know, testing is not only automation, but it is a big part. And on RPA side, automation is a big part as well. And there's a lot of similarities, a lot of potential to share and reuse um, um, artifacts, infrastructure, and, and, and skills. And that's what we are talking about. We want to make the case for it makes sense to have one automation layer um, throughout the enterprise. Sorry, exactly. go ahead, Matt. All right. Um, so I think this is the time where we really want you to keep an open mind. Um, I want to set up this video. So it was about two years ago, I was watching the first launch of SpaceX uh, with my son. Um, and the, we were watching, watching this Launch America uh, video that was, that's available on YouTube openly. Um, and so anybody can go watch this. But I pulled this clip out because it, was, it really spoke to me. And I think it's a great analogy kind of comparing the physical, you know, the world of building physical things to our world of busy, building virtual components. And so I wanted to play this for everybody. So uh, let's take a listen. I know when we see Falcon 9, we get to talk a lot about reusability. Everyone is very familiar with the, the first stage coming back down and yep. how cool that looks. Dragon is also designed with some reusability. In fact, you've flown Dragon multiple times or you've flown Dragons multiple times to the space station. How does reusability factor into Dragon's life cycle? Yeah, so I'll actually talk a little bit about both because I one thing I think everyone always thinks about reusability and hey, it saves money or that's great, but reusability actually improves your reliability. So when we get Falcons back and when we get Dragons back, either after one mission or multiple missions, we can do all these detailed inspections on them. And that's super important because when you fly a vehicle, you can only have so many sensors on it. You can't put a sensor, you know, every single inch of a rocket or a spacecraft. And there's already way more than I think anybody realizes. Exactly. But so, you know, especially for rockets that wind up in the ocean, some people don't have any idea of what they actually went through. So the fact that we get all the hardware back, we were able to inspect literally every square inch of it and make small design changes that actually improve reliability for the whole fleet. So even though, Bob and Doug are on a brand new rocket. 
and a brand new spacecraft, that those spacecraft are actually more reliable based on the knowledge we've learned from reusability. We've walked people through a lot of the new systems on Dragon. So, um, so great food for thought. I mean, I think Thomas, um, when we talked about this, we kind of took this and we thought about it, you know, um, how does this apply to the automation space? Um, and what we found is that um, really there was three things that we um, kind of took out of that video that really apply that we can take into, into the automation space um, and use going forward. The first one is synergy. Um, so really kind of that reuse, you know, getting the organization aligned, um, keeping those things together. So we're explore all three of these a little bit more. The next is speed. So being able to react fast, to, to recover fast. And then once you have these two things, then it gives you opportunities to go beyond what you're doing today. Um, so, I mean, like what do testers do when there's nothing left to do? They test more, of course, um, or they test new things. And so that's what we're gonna talk about. First of synergy. So um, some interesting facts about SpaceX is that SpaceX actually buys components from Tesla. And so they have interchangeable components that they use. So really when you're buying a Tesla, you know, you have some components that are actually used in, in the SpaceX, you know, program. Um, additionally, Tesla often goes to SpaceX for advice on when they're building their cars. Uh, for example, the Model Y went to SpaceX to learn how to uh, do welding better. And so interesting concepts of, of reuse and sharing skill sets that I think really apply to our space, Thomas. Absolutely. I, I love the sentence, you know, it's not only about saving costs, um, it's about reliability. So let's let's kind of transform that to, to, to our story. Um, if you are on the development side, you're creating test automation, test automation assets, and you will reuse those very test automation assets to automate stuff on IT side, uh, to test pa uh, patches that you want to deliver and that go through IT side to business side, and then when you automate your business process in RPA side. So it's not only saving the costs, but it's that synergy and that reliability that you get because it went through so much many stages. It is proven to work and you're good to go on, on, on business side. And from your lens now, um, I guess most of you are on the QA side. So what, what's in for me? Well, you are creating uh, those assets. You're the first ones to create. Why? As a matter of fact, the typical pipeline will start on the testing on the dev side, right? Assets will move from testing dev to IT, and then they will move to production. The big benefit might be on production side because they can leverage what you built, but that is one of the big uh, points we want to make towards moving from a cost to a value center because then it's fairly easy to argue. You are a automation deployer, an automation um, um, producer within your organization. You produce assets, you produce software actually with your automation that will be reused and leveraged in many areas. So and very I would important. argue that, um, that that test automation developers or test engineers are probably better um, and more advanced than the RPA developers because they've been doing absolutely for 20 years, 20 years. I mean, and that's one of the points I make at our organization all the time is that we really need to get the testing teams using this because this is where they're, they're, they're the experts. They're going to really drive this forward and they're going to make sure the components are high quality as well. Um, the other thing is sharing, sharing the, the quality mindset across the organization. So taking the, the, the expertise of testing to the actual, the, to the other teams and, and telling the RPA guys, guys, we got to test this stuff. You can't just test the happy path. You got to test everything. And so kind of spreading that, that quality mindset across the organization, I think is another really important part of synergy. And then the final one that I, I was thinking of um, was alignment. So, you know, when all these, when we have all these silos of automation tools and teams, they're building their own processes, they're building their own things. They're not talking to other teams. And how great would it be if the RPA team were talking to the testing team and the testing team could say, oh, this is how this process works. This is how, and then they can help each other out over time, I think as well. Yeah, plus one on, on everything you just said. A little anecdote again here. Um, as we are working for UiPath, which is the leader on the RPA space, we 
have a lot of contact with RPA teams as well. And as a matter of fact, of course, the RPA engineers very often have a development background or even a testing background, right? Because it makes perfect sense. But on the other hand, there are a lot of CEO, uh, COEs that are staffed by business people. And guess what? They, are not, they don't have a development background and they have to learn what is your daily business now for years, right? So um, if you look at the, the, the evolvement or the history of software development, you see certain stages. We went from a waterfall approach to an iterative and incremental approach to an agile approach to a continuous everything approach, uh, went through different stages. At the very beginning, there was no real testing. It evolved around probably 80s, 90s, and is, is now a common standard. And, and, and those um, COEs, those RPA COEs, very often try to start from the very left. They start again in that process-driven approach and move from, um, from stage to stage. And what we propose here is learn from, from the resources you have internally in your company, your software developers and your test engineers. They know better. They know how, uh, what, what is state of the art, how you should do it, what is the most cost efficient and, uh, and effective way to do that. Excellent. I agree with everything you said. All right, let's move on um, for time purposes. So um, time purposes, speed. So um, I think the other thing that SpaceX does, you know, the reusable model and the ability, to, you know, they, they've architected things so that the, the boosters land on, on an island or on a ship and they can reuse them. All this reuse and the synergy has allowed them to move faster. They can launch faster than NASA more often, getting more payload to space, which, you know, it equates to value delivery in, in my mind. And so in, in our world, you know, the same thing happens in, in my mind. Uh, when, when, when we have automation that is working across the enterprise and, and is in sync and, and is aligned, then you can execute faster. And we have teams that have done this with our products and they've improved their release, uh, their release, back, release cycles by even eight times, as much as eight times. Um, Thomas, what, what do you have to add here? Speed is important. Speed is most important probably for your boss and your boss's boss because that's money, right? Um, but it makes sense. Um, we, we live in times of digital transformation. Um, it's, it's requested to speed up processes, to leverage synergies to do so, and that's the perfect opportunity. If you build something once and reuse it way uh, more often, of course, you save a lot of money. Just think, think about testing and test automation itself. Um, the, the big rule is if, if you test something once, you, you probably might not create an automation for it. It doesn't make sense. You're quicker doing the manual test on it. But if you're creating a reusable automation asset that is not only used for testing, but for any automation purpose throughout the um, um, uh, company and life cycle, well, then it makes sense. Then you will speed up the process essentially, and therefore will help save cost and, and therefore money. Again, a point towards um, moving from a cost to a value center. Yep, agreed. All right. So the next one is my probably my favorite. So I think once you have that synergy and you have the speed, um, it really opens up opportunities. So it's opening opportunities for SpaceX to move ahead of their competition to get into new fields like mining asteroids and, and colonizing Mars and space tourism, you know, um, so there's lots of different opportunities that the that, that, that synergy and speed and reuse are, are allowing SpaceX to um, enjoy. Uh, I think similarly, automation is in the same spot. So, so once you have, once you scaled your automation across the enterprise and you're all in, in alignment, it allows your organization to sense and respond to, to to new opportunities. So if a, if a competitor comes out with something and you need to swarm a team together of automation developers, now you can do that. Today you're, you're in silos and you, you would have to, everybody would have to learn the new technology on that project, apply it, and it would take three or four times as long to, to um, react to some situation like that. What do you think, Thomas? Absolutely. I wanna, I probably for me, the more important part, if I would be in that role is, is um, is the career opportunity. I, I watched um, a talk just uh, half an hour before we started from Daniel Knott. About, um, he talked about 
career opportunities on the tasting side. And he stated the question, when was the last time you gave or received any career advice? And I thought about it. I thought about it my, uh, about my colleagues uh, at Tracentis and at UiPath as well, specifically the ones in the tasting uh, space. It, it can be a hard business, right? Again, you're perceived as a cost center. It's something you have to be, uh, to be done. Everybody's talking about automation. Nobody's uh, acknowledging what testing actually means. Of course, it's more than automation. You have to have the domain knowledge and whatnot. So it, it can be tough to be in testing. You have, if you're not that uh, outgoing person that kind of presents um, at, uh, and ha holds talks and has a blog and whatnot, it can be very tough. So I want to, or we want to state the big career opportunity that is out here. I mentioned it previously. Um, as a matter of fact, there are plenty of uh, test engineers, test automation engineers, who have, of course, seized the opportunity. They have, they have seen the the introduction, the involvement, the success of RPA, and they move towards RPA. Why? Because the it, it has attention, right? It has CEO attention. Um, you have. Uh, you probably have a better perception within your company. You're the ones automating something very important. It's not testing, but something that saves money. So that's the one opportunity. You could move towards RPA. The even bigger opportunity that I think of and that we would propose is, is an automation theory. So as mentioned, testers, testing is more than just automation. RPA, although it sounds crazy, is also more than automation. On both sides, you need certain domain knowledge, you need the language and, and stuff like that you, to, to really be successful there. And we propose an, a, a center of excellence for automation specifically. This includes uh, people that are really good at automating stuff. Might it be for test automation? Might it be for IT processes or for business processes on, 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 on business side. Um, and there should, of course, be people in that CEOE with a certain T-shaped knowledge, experts that are more, that more lean towards testing, others that more lean towards um, RPA or business processes, something like that. And together, they have a huge opportunity to transform their entire organization. Together, they will uh, have that big success. They will have the possibility um, of of speeding up processes, of saving a lot of money. And that's how even the test engineers will have the possibility to, to gain more respect and more acknowledgement within a um, organization. That's what we propose. And that's what I think is, is the big thing here, the big opportunity for you as test engineers as well. Be the, the architect of automation um, uh, and, and help your organization to speed up processes and to, to, to gain those synergies. Totally agree with that. And, and I think, um, and I think once you're in that position, then you can really take on new, um, bigger projects. Um, so like one of the, one of the passions that, that I'm in right, that I have right now is around the customer experience testing. And so I've had some bad experience. I think I'm sure we've all bad, had bad consumer experiences. And what if we had been testing those things? What if we tested a uh, promotion from the marketing department to make sure it actually worked? Um, these are things we can't do today because we're so focused on testing the applications themselves. And so I think testing can really expand its its aperture and and have more um, you know have more uh, power and influence in the organization as well. Um, even things like um, S4 HANA migrations. If you had a coordinated automation approach that could automate it, uh, refactor it, you know, with process mining, automate it, and then um, make, validate it to make sure that the 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 uh, migration went successfully, you know, how amazing could that be? So I think there's lots of different opportunities that we can take on in this space. Absolutely. And a um, few, a few words from the sponsor, um, please join our community. You will see a lot of passionate people there um, already working in both spaces. So we have a lot of um, community experts doing testing, doing RPA, focusing, of course, on automation, and they can help you with your decision or also with your education. We have a completely free academy. They can help you transition and, and, and kind of being successful in both areas. So 
specifically uh, as a career opportunity, I think it's it's a great move to be able to work in both areas. That's what I mean, right? Exactly. Totally agree. All right, Thomas. Um, what does automation convergence look like? And so we thought it would be better to paint a picture of kind of what this looks like, you know, with the different teams on there. And so I'll, I'll let you explain this because you, you do a way better job than I do. Um, happy to. So let's let's uh, again start over with with those three areas. That's very simplified. An organization looks different, but very simplified view would be you have development on the very left side, you have IT in the middle, and business on the right hand side. As mentioned, um, there is a lot of automation going on in all those areas. On testing side, on development side, there is a lot of test automation uh, pipelines. So automating a process to to get your software delivered. Uh, same holds true on IT side. You have automation to prepare environments, to test patches that might be delivered, and at some point moving those patches on, on to business side. And on business side, of course, you have RPA. So a lot of redundancy right now, a lot of different tools. We mentioned it. And if you have a closer look, you see that a lot of, that, um, of those automations are doing the same thing. A simple example would be, as simple as a Salesforce login. You might use or, or uh, leverage something on development side to test your Salesforce instance. You might use it on IT side, just as a matter of fact, to trigger some Salesforce process. And of course, you will use it on, on business side for an RPA process. And that, at, let's, let's think of the following scenario. Let's say you have a, a new Salesforce patch for your custom Salesforce version, um, which is currently in development. On IT side, they plan to roll out the previous version of that very patch. And on development side, they are even a version um, before this one and are automating a business process on that. So what happens now is you on testing or development side, you are the first ones in the game, right? You are working on the latest changes. And for those latest changes, you now build test automation. This very test automation can now be part of the whole package of those artifacts of that new release that is moved over to IT. So you move over the new release as well as your latest automation assets. In IT, you use them to make sure um, that the new release is also working in a pre-prod environment. And then you move everything, if everything works, you move it to the business side. So the new um, Salesforce release or patch is rolled out and you have your ready to use automation for RPA already available. You don't have to build it from scratch because typically, if you don't do that, a, 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 a typical approach would be um, you have an automation on RPA side and then there comes a new patch, a new version of your application that you're automating on top. And as it has some changes, guess what? It will fail, your automation will fail. And that costs money. That costs a lot of money to fix that automation. But in our scenario, if you're using the very same automation uh, uh, platform already on development side for test automation, you will have the right assets uh, for the right version at hand as soon as a new patch or new version is re uh, reaching the business side. So that's that's the big problem, is the big uh, opportunity here. You can deliver not only software, um, uh, but also the, uh, the according assets to test it and to automate it. And big topic we talked about, it's not only the automation assets, it's of course also the infrastructure. You can reuse infrastructure that you're running your tests on to run automation um, on business side. And um, the most important one probably is the skill set. If you are able to, if you leverage one automation platform and you are able to automate on that platform, you might have specific testing skills, you might have specific business skills, but you will be the go-to expert to create that automation. Might it be test automation, might it be RPA? That's the big opportunity that you get, your personal opportunity as a test engineer, as an automation engineer. Yeah, and I also think it, um, back to my point earlier about alignment. So then also, it, the, this also drives alignment around you know, value delivery across the teams as well. So everybody's on the same page. There's no, uh, people are not, you know, all marching in the same direction as well. And then also the governance piece. So now you're, now you're, you have, 
your automation centrally controlled and monitored. And even um, for our citizen developers, so we also have a citizen developer uh, product called Studio X. Um, now what we can do is if a citizen developer in the business develops something like a expense report automation, now we can in ingest that into the COE, uh, test that, make sure it's work, um, harden it, and then push it back out to them. Instead of them using their own tools, um, and, and not having any control or knowledge of what's going on. And who knows, someone in the business might create something amazing. Something in the test team, you might create something amazing that the business is gonna use and will add a lot of value. So there, there's um, there's a lot of a lot of benefits to this approach. Absolutely. All right. Do you wanna take us home? Um, sure. So how, um, how conversions now helps you to test more for less. That's, that's the idea here. Um, specifically, our solution that we provide, and it doesn't mean that it's only about UiPath that might work with other solutions as well. What we offer, however, is um, we want to connect you or we want to be integrated in your existing platform. So although we think there should be one automation platform, um, we also know that best of breed is, is, is the mantra and you have to fit into an existing ecosystem, right? There's a lot of different tools uh, in a typical enterprise. I think it's around several thousand solutions that, that are working there. So what we try to do is of course, to fit into that existing um, ecosystem. We try to be able to connect to all ALM solutions, connect on CI side um, and so on and so forth. Of course, we also want to help you to migrate existing assets. What we know is um, when we get to new customer, question number one is, you know what? Um, great solution, but I already have 50,000 test cases. What are we going to do with that? What we want to want to want to provide here is, first of all, the possibility to still use it. You can invoke it and we can report on it or we can help you migrate it. Might it be via RPA solution or via dedicated migration routine? Of course, our goal is to increase um, the- Thomas, let me stop you really quick. Let me talk Sorry, you really quick there. So on step two, also, I want to point out that we don't we don't advocate the test everything mentality either. So if you have 50,000 test cases and those 50,000 don't really make sense, this is also a time where you can say, which are the right test cases? Maybe bring in process mining and say, oh, you're actually testing 50,000 cases, but really you only need to test 20,000 test cases. That, that's probably something we would do at this phase as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, of course. Did we lose Thomas? That's right, being at 90 or plus percent. And, and we acknowledge the fact that um, testing is more than just automation and there will always be a part that is manual. That's, that's just as a matter of fact. Probably it doesn't make sense to automate it because it's something you do once within a sprint and not more often. Or probably it just requires too much knowledge, too much creativity, and an uh, automated test case will not be able to cover that. Nevertheless, we offer you a platform that has drivers for any technology so you theoretically can automate any technology out of the box. And of course, we want to help expand the testing footprint. Um, so you as a tester are not only able to create RPA automation with that solution, but you can introduce RPA testing to the RPA COE. Tell them how important testing is for automation and any sort of software. Tell them what are the best practices, what are the standards to do that. And that's, that's our goal with, with our solution. It's a broad platform that we offer here. Um, for any sort of automation, might it be testing, might it be RPA, might it be IT automation. We offer you a lot of tools um, um, around that area like task mining, process mining. So it's a lot to discover. The core, however, uh, um, the core message is we, we can help you automate any sort of technology. That's that's the main goal here. Wanna anything add? Uh, wanna add anything, Matt? I don't think so. I think you covered it pretty well. Um, I think that, um... Yeah, we already talked about kind of ex the expanded ideas of what other things you could do, but I think that that this is really exciting for testers. You know that there's there is a new there's a new career path for them, and and there are new opportunities, and there is some an excitement coming into the testing world. 
Um, and I think that's that's really cool. It's kind of a, a renaissance of testing, I think, we're at that point. All Absolutely. right. That's fantastic. that's fantastic. And what a great ride you took me to with all those uh, images from the SpaceX and uh, Tesla examples. Great. Thanks a lot for the insightful session. And I'm sure the message is driven home. Optimization and testing can get us better ROI from all other investment as well as you explain the concepts of reusability and, and the overall synergy opportunity that has to be driven. So great. Thanks a lot, uh, Matt, uh, Thomas. Uh, this session will be available on demand as well later. And uh, enjoy, enjoy the rest of the uh, evening here at TestMu conference and uh, engage uh, with all the community discussions that we are having here. Thanks a lot uh, for attending this session. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.